Ryan Harris getting set back deep, uh, standing about five yards deep in the back of the end zone is Nathan Uranga. That may not be deep enough, but a shorter kick is taken by Uranga up at the 5 to the 10, 15, across the 25, seam 30, 35, across the 40, up the middle of the field, 45, and tackled at the 47-yard line. It was not Uranga, it was Justin Kirkland. And I don't think that's exactly what the special teams coaches from Stingle wanted to see to open up a game that they should handle pretty easily because the longer you let them hang around, I think that's going to make Stingle fans, players, and coaches a little bit more upset. Yeah, you, you're right. Uh, you mentioned that 32-0. and 0. Since 1993, Stephenville has won 83 of their 120, uh, 115 games in this decade. That's almost uh, 13 games per uh, per year average. Chris Jean hands up over the right side, gives the ball to Kirkland. He is hit immediately by Robert Harrison. Harrison stacks him up at the uh, line of scrimmage back at the 47. So someone we did not expect to see in the starting lineup on offense is Dustin Kirkland, the man that had the nice return. He also starts at tailback and then immediately leaves the field and is replaced by Tucker, who's come into the game. As Gene stands in shotgun formation with his two banks flanked on both sides, twins to both sides. High snap over the head of Gene, back to the 30, 35, going back to pick it up is the tailback, Tucker. He gets on the ball at the 26, 27-yard line. A high snap from Chad McGuire goes over the head of Chris Gene, and Gene and his tailback chased it down, Tucker, but could do nothing with it, and so it sets up third down and 27. Did you notice how quick Gene went back there and fell on the ball? Kind of interesting. In pregame, they were practicing that. Falling on the football after well, missing On a bad snap. Did you all notice that? They, but they were rolling it across the ground. They didn't do the over-the-head move. <laughs> but he knew what to do. Gene under center, hands the ball straight ahead to his tailback, Tucker, who does not get back in the line of scrimmage. The ball squirts out up to the 32-yard line. Steve Mill has gotten on the football. Picking it up was Fanning. And Steve Mill takes over at their own 32, excuse me, at the Burleson 32-yard line. That looked to me like he was down like he was down and just kind of threw the ball forward I, that was weird but uh the officials never dropped a bean bag no whistles nothing so i guess maybe he was just trying for for extra uh, yardage and that, a lot of times you'll see a turnover like that jackets will line up with trips to the near side one to the far side browse is in shotgun with hunter standing next to him browse looking back now throwing out in the flats to hunter he catches then drops the ball at the 30 yard line and it's an incomplete pass Hunter would have had the first down easy. It was a good pass right in his hands, just did not quite look it in before he headed upfield. It'll be second down and 10. Zach, the leading receiver this year on this team with 22 catches for 158 yards. That would, of course, would have been number 23, and he had two big blocks right out in front of him, and he might have run for a while. Second down and 10 for the Jackets. Ball at the 32-yard line of Burleson, 10-28 to go here in the Bank of America. First quarter, first drive of the game for Stephenville. Hunter in motion to the far sideline. Browse setting up in shotgun, looking deep across the middle, has Gunn. Gunn makes a good catch at about the 16-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down, and Stephenville will move the chains first and 10. Looked to me like uh, one of the guys in the slot on the near side might have left early, but no flag, so it must have been just right on the money. Brady Gunn really turned into, has turned into a good receiver in this offense. I know earlier in the season, Brady had a game where he had trouble holding on to the football, but he has shown no effects of that as the season has progressed. Twins to the far side, one receiver near side. Eye formation behind Browse under center now. Now he sends the tailback Hunter in motion. Throwing the deep fade pattern up for O'Neill. It's over his head to the near pylon. A little bit too much on the ball as Browse was throwing with the wind, and I think you saw a little bit yeah. of effect there. I think you did, especially throwing it uh, uh, to the corner like that. And, you know, of course, a touchdown last week and a touchdown in the uh, Cleburne game uh, on that same pass. But uh, I think you're right. I think he'll just have to adjust to that. It seems that as, as though Coach Browse is saying we're going to throw every down until we get in the end zone on this drive. Twins to the near side, one receiver far side. Browse is under center. Play action rolling out to the near side is Browse looking to throw. Has a receiver. It's Bashaw caught at the five, to the four, to the three, to the two. Does he get in? Touchdown! Josh Bashaw with a late move got across the goal line, and Stephenville connects from 17 yards out. Stephenville scores first 6-0 at the Bank of America first quarter. That looked pretty easy, didn't it? I mean, it's just, again, I think you just see the inexperience of that uh, Burleson team of just throwing a bunch of different looks at them on offense. Jackets will move out of the swinging gate and come back to the traditional extra point and send out the kicking personnel. Patronus has the hold. Nelson with the kick. Doty has the snap. 
Only two incompletions on that series, by the way. One drop, one just over the head of O'Neill. Nelson getting set, snap back, hold down, kick is on the way, it is up and it is good. Jackets getting ready to kick off again, and Johnny, the last scoring drive. Four points, 32 yards, only took 38 seconds. Fast shawl, that 18-yard pass from Burrell's PAT, good. Harris's kick is away deep, end over end kick that will come down at the base of the goal post through the back of the end zone, and Stephen Bull, excuse me, Burleson will begin first and 10, their own 20-yard line. That last scoring summary brought to you by Olu, he's on the uh, South Loop. Yeah, breakfast this morning, by the way. Very nice, before uh, coffee. Okay. And also with that first score, uh, uh, Scott Osmond, attorney at law, has made a uh, very nice cash donation to the Rath County Meals on Wheels. Great project there, thank you, Scott. What is our quarter today? Uh, oh, it is the uh, fourth quarter. That might not be a good quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and Pat Phillips, who uh, works over at, uh, she works at Town & Country Bank as our contestant. Already, Chris Jean is under center eye formation behind him, giving straight ahead to the fullback. That is Rowe. Rowe will go forward for about a yard. Flag down by the side judge. They will halt play momentarily to make the decision on the penalty. Oh. See, that was all... That whole 32 yards was passing, wasn't it? There was no rush. Exactly. It is offsides against Stephenville, so uh, add five yards to that run. There's no gain, so it sets up first and five via the penalty. So that puts, uh, if you go by the Stephenville stats, and they're different depending on what paper or Stephenville, but if you go by Stephenville stats, that puts Kendall over 1,800 yards on the season on that series. And I have seen some that have had him as much as like 1,846. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case, he's getting close to 19. <laughs> Gene is once again under center. Chris Gene, the junior quarterback. The uh, backs are split behind him on the inside trap, giving the ball to uh, Ben Rowe, the fullback. He stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Good inside defensive play from is that Monk or it looks Scott, like some, Lee. Scott Lee Scott was Lee. in there very quickly for Stephenville, as well as Kent Howe. I, I thought I saw 48 getting off the bottom of the pile. It was uh, Hal making the stop initially. So it's third down and six. Split receivers to both sides. Uh, split backs as well behind Gene Tucker. The tailback row is the fullback. Giving the ball once again to the fullback row. Row will get to the line of scrimmage, and that will be about it. So it's third down and six coming up for the Elks. Hal Monk and uh, Jilson uh, that time. In on the tackle. 8.46 and counting here in the Bank of America. First quarter, Stephenville 7, Burleson nothing. Two receivers will be split to the far side, Anderson and Muse. Almost like the old Dallas Cowboy offensive line thing. You know what I'm saying? They go up and they go down and set. High snap, but handled and then sacked by Monk back at the 18-yard line. Chris Jean was momentarily thrown for a second because of the high snap. Didn't really get to release the ball when he wanted to, and because of that, Monk had time on the linebacker blitz to get on top of him. It is a loss of six yards. It'll bring up fourth down and 11 and the Elks will be forced to punt into this pretty stiff win, trailing 7-0. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's going to be uh, it's going to be bad field position again for uh, for the for the Elks giving up bad field position. Be great for the Steve Bill Yellow game. Punting for the Elks is Paul Muse. Felt stands at his own at the excuse me at the 50-yard line. Kick is away, almost blocked by Monk. It is taken by Feltz at the 45, comes to the 40, inside 39, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, cut back, 10, 5, Feltz scores! 45 yards return on the cut from Burleson. Stephenville extends now 14 to nothing after the Feltz big return. 28 yards uh, punt, which is not a bad punt, really, but the bad thing about it was boots at the line drive, and his coverage team had no chance of getting down there. And Just a great read by Feltz to come up and, 
the wall was formed on the near side and he got around the corner. Once he got around the corner at the 30, there was no doubt he was going to score. I think it took him longer to go from the 10 to the goal line than it did from the 45 to the 10. <laughs> good, good point. It was almost he, he momentarily lost his balance and then just kind of had to dive across the goal line. He did get across Felt's first touchdown of the year via the punt return as Nelson gets set for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way, almost blocked. The extra point is good. Fly Ryan Harris getting set to kick off again for the Yellow Jackets, who lead 14 to nothing. And Johnny, the last scoring drive. Well, 47 yards took 10 seconds. Uh, Feltz on that 47-yard uh, punt return. PAT good. It's 14 nothing. That scoring summary by uh, Barnes and McCulloch. Harris getting sent back deep again for the Elks is Kirkland. Deep kick that Kirkland will watch go over his head and out of the back of the end zone. It hits past the end line. So the Elks will begin once again, first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Well, uh, well can we find Steve Ross? Yeah, he's there. He's ready to go. Steve-O, uh, five minutes into the game, the Jackets up 14. Well, and they're killing us on our stats, Johnny. We're playing all on this end of the field. And, you know, somebody needs to go tell Trey Feltz, hey, we're trying to put up numbers here. <laughs> Gosh. Good point. <laughs> if we're trying to get the state lead and some uh, individual stats and returning punts doesn't help, huh? No, I think the main objective here, Stephen Bell jumped out early. They want to get a lot of kids in tonight, and they want to keep everybody healthy. I don't think you'll see a lot of starters in the second half if this continues. All righty, back on offense are the Elks. Chris Jean is under center with a tight look, and somebody moved, and then... Harmon just took the repercussion planted, of that. <laughs> planted the right guard there. He's like, well, I think he moved, coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he moved. I hit him. <laughs> Whoops, offsides against Stephenville is the call, so I guess he couldn't sell his call there. It'll be first and five for the Elks. That'll move the ball out to the 25-yard line. 14-0 Stephenville. 7.24 to go here in the Bank of America first quarter. For power right now. Three backs in the backfield behind Gene, who is under center. Hand off over the right side and stacked up behind the line, but now escaping a good move outside the 35, 40, 43, 44 yard line. Good hard running from Kirkland of the Elks. And the Elks, Johnny, just got in, you said, a power backfield in which they uh, put two fullbacks and then one tailback. And it looks like Kirkland may have had the wind knocked out of him. He's laying there right there trying to get it back. Oh, I don't know about that. He's kind of holding his. Well, he looks like he's all right. He's going to the sideline. But I think that's one of the situations he had the wind knocked out of him. And he looks knew like if he, he sat there long enough, the wind would come back. He might have even fallen on that football. And, right. Well, that will that will take it away from The him. worst feeling in the world is having the wind knocked out of your lungs and everything you try to do to get a breath in and nothing works. That and a bunch of guys piled on top of you and you can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> get off of me. Gene again under center. Same formation for the Elks. It's a double tight look with the two fullbacks and the tail behind them, handing off to the fullback Ooh. on the near side. <laughs> Hit after he gets to about the 45, 46 yard line is Ben Rowe. Man, there gain was of about three. He was hit hard right when he Monk? got there. I think it was Monk that was first guy there. Man, that was quite a collision, Harrison and Monk. Uh, Justin Monk making his presence known here early in this football game. Elks uh, wanting to keep the ball on the ground, I'm guessing because of the stiff wind they're going into, but it looks like the wind may have dropped a little bit since before an hour before kick when it was really blowing. Same formation. Full backfield look for the Elks with uh, Chris Jean again under center. Giving to the tailback coming up inside the 45 across midfield to the 49-yard line. That's Cole Tucker. 
Tucker picks up about uh, four, almost five yards, so it'll set up third down and a long two needed for the Elks. Well, that was just great blocking up front by the Elks and uh, a good move by Tucker. It looked like that that play was designed to go in between the tackles, and he just didn't see anything there, squirted around outside and got the, the positive yardage, as you said, third down and long two. Christine once again brings the Elks up to the line, double tight end set, power backfield look as well, two fullbacks, one tailback. Give the ball to the tailback is Tucker. Tucker will get to about the 48, and then he'll be driven backwards. He'll be a solid yard short of the yardage needed for the first. It'll bring up fourth down and one, and that was a situation, Johnny, where Cole Tucker came around the side and had to jump over some of his blockers, and when he did and was in the air, that left him exposed, and the defensive line of Jilson and a couple others drug him, just pushed him straight back. Look at the punt. Well, fourth and one, and they've had some success. This would be like the worst starting position for Stephenville if you didn't make it. I mean, it's... Burleson will have yeah, to take a timeout. Think they may that. talk about this one. 5.05 to go in the Bank of America first quarter. Stephenville 14, Burleson nothing. Back in one minute on KSTV. Burleson coaching staff have changed their mind. They'll decide to go for it, or at least line up to go for it. Fourth and one at the Stephenville 48 yard line. Gene under center. Long snap count. Three backs behind him. Could be trying to draw the steeple jackets offside, and instead Gene draws his own guard offsides. Left guard for the Elks, that's Danny Galvin, now, with the hard snap through his own guard offsides. Now that's interesting. Were they going to go for it? I don't. Didn't look like they were going to go for it, did no, it? So he where's was, the guard going? Right. If he knew they were not going to snap the ball, you just sit down and you don't move. That was weird. They, well, I, that's a heck of a hard count when you get your own guy to jump <laughs> off sides when you know you're not going to try to snap the ball. He, they might have been trying to go for it. Paul Muse is a back to punt. Snap back to him. Kick is away. Flags are down. Pretty good punt. Is fair caught by Feltz at the 20-yard line. 20, 33 yards on the kick. Excellent kick into that win, but let's wait and see what the flag is. Do we need to go to Steve Ross? Let's go down to Stevie. What do you got? Well, I, I just picked up on something that the Burleson Elks probably saw on game film from Cleburne. If you remember how successful Cleburne was in drawing Stephenville off sides, Burleson's trying that same tactic. If you watch the quarterback raise and lower his, his left foot before the snap, and I'm not sure how violent that is, <laughs> but he's got, or how legal that is, how violent that is. I don't think it's very violent. He's gotten Stephenville to jump off sides a couple times, though. It's been pretty effective if you watch the players uh, as he stomps his left foot before the snap. It didn't work that time, but it has twice before. Thank, right. thank you, Stevie. Yeah. Stephen will decline the penalty and will take over at their own 21. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Kendall looking, in some trouble. Now he'll escape, coming to the near side, looking to throw downfield and has Douglas, but can't make the catch on the near sideline. Douglas really had to stretch out to try to stay on the sideline, and that was a combination between Bryles trying to throw one on the sideline and maybe just trying to throw that one away. Is it a penalty? I can't remember. Is it a penalty if you go out of bounds, come back in to your first one, touch the ball? Yes. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All righty. Second down and 10. Huh? Twins to the far side. Riles is under center. Tight end look. One back behind him. Play action. Kendall setting up, looking to throw. Look at the tight end drag. Now he throws it to Douglas. Oh, almost a great one-handed catch. But the 6'5", Douglas cannot bring that one down. Well, it looked like he was going up for a tomahawk dunk when he <laughs> had did, that ball up on top of his hands. You know, he made a great catch like that last week in the uh, Joshua game. If he had made that catch, that would have been even more exciting. Third down and 10 for Stephenville at their own 21-yard line. And jacket passing game, I, I believe, uh, is Art Browse trying to really fine-tune that? They have not run the ball yet tonight. It's probably 35 uh, passes here before we ever run one. <laughs> twins to the near side, twins to the far side. Tight end look as well with Bryles in shotgun. Looking, still oh looking, still looking. Now Bryles will run across the 20 to the 25. Gets a block across the 30, 35, and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Man. You see the explosiveness as Kendall Bryles out of the backfield when he wants to tuck it under and run. Pickup of 14 for the senior quarterback, excuse me, junior quarterback. And via the scramble is the only reason Steamville has any rushing. Yeah, good point. And, and Man, I, he had all day, didn't he? I mean, they were just defensive linemen just getting pancaked out there. And, and 
Finally, Kendall just said, well, I need 10. I'm going to go get 15. Burleson is dropping eight back in coverage on every play. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Browse is in shotgun with Hunter standing next to him. Looking to throw, still looking. Browse still looking. Now he'll run. 35 across the 40. 45 makes a move to the middle of the field, across midfield, back to the 45. 40 down to the 39-yard line is Kendall. First down for the Jackets, 25 yards on the carry. Man, you can see. And when the defenders turn around and run with their back to the quarterback, they're going to be in trouble with Kendall Browse back there. Well, and I think if they continue this, then some point that the coaching staff at Burles is going to have to say, well, we've got to start rushing more than three. And just as we say that, they put four down defensive linemen. Steemo lines up with trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Browse in shotgun as the coaching staff now audibleizes the play in, and now Browse audibleizes at the line. No huddle offense, snap back to Browse in shotgun, setting up, looking to throw the deep ball. Has Douglas over the top, great pitch, move at the 15, 10, escape to the five, balls fumbled out of bounds at the one yard line, and Stephenville will keep the football. No possession was ever gained by Burleson Elk after the ball was fumbled, and because you cannot have a forward fumble, the ball will be spotted at the five yard line. So it's 35 yards on the catch from Browse to Douglas, and Credit Douglas was making a nice catch on the sideline, then making a couple people miss, then trying to extend the ball out near the goal line, had it knocked away. Fortunate for Steamville, the ball went out of bounds. Steamville will keep the football at the five-yard line of Burleson. First to goal for the Jackets, eye formation behind Browse under Cinny. The uh, tailback is Hunter. He goes in motion. Browse throwing the deep fade pattern up for Douglas. Caught. Touchdown. T.J. Douglas brings in the tall pass from Browse. And Stephenville extends 20 to nothing at the 349 mark of the Bank of America first quarter. PAT upcoming. Well, that was uh, the T.J. Douglas drive there, I think. <laughs> you know, back to that 35-yard uh, uh, completion from the 40 just a moment ago that he had a defender kind of hanging all over him, and T.J. just you, show, you saw the strength of him as he just kind of hung on and went up and got that pass and then uh, rambled another 15, 20 yards. Even Elson getting set for the extra point. Patronus has the hold, Doty the snap. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. getting set to kick off for uh, Stephenville. That last scoring drive, six plays, 79 yards, took a minute, nine Douglas on that five-yard pass from Browse PAT, good, 21 to nothing. That scoring summary by the Walmart Vision Center. You talk about uh, making the best of your, your time on the offense. 21 <laughs> points in 10 plays. Oh, goodness. So you got throwing a kick return in there. I agree. 3.49 to go here in the first quarter. Harris getting set to kick off again. Deep, end over end kick. That one has a chance, almost went across the crossbar. That was about six yards deep behind the end line. So Burleson will get set to kick off again. And boy, I wonder if that makes Doug Montgomery any nervous watching how <laughs> deep those kicks are going with the wind. Hey, I want to give you a news report I found out before the game. This was uh, reported by WFAA that uh, the FBI is going to be at the Mineral Wells football game tonight. The Mineral Wells uh, Boswell, a big game to see who gets in the playoffs. There have been bomb and riot threats made prior to the game and the FBI has been called in with some of their patrol to make sure that nothing goes awry in Mineral Wells tonight. What are they right in the so I don't know. Yeah, I'm glad we're not playing them. Back to action. Uh, the uh, tight tight end look again. Gene pitches out to Kirkland. Kirkland will get to the line of scrimmage and that is about it. Double tight end look, uh, two fullback and tailback. The power set behind Gene is the way the Elks went and had most of their success on the last drive. Feltz that time comes up to make tackle from safety position. And I guess that's what you like to see uh, your safety doing. Let's see Browse now. Four of eight for 72 yards and two touchdowns here in the first quarter. Second down and 10 for the Elks. Once again, the same power backfield look. Chris Jean under center, the two fullbacks, the tailbacks directly behind him with the two tight ends, giving the ball to the fullback on the near side. That was Ben Rowe. Rowe will go forward to the 21, a gain of one. It's third down and nine. 
We do have a score uh, in the uh, Brownwood game now. It's uh, first quarter, Brownwood 7, Joshua nothing. Out of District 7, 3A, Breckenridge on top of Comanche 7 nothing in the first quarter. Third down and nine for the Elks, 240 and counting. 21 nothing Stephenville here in the first quarter. Again, we will try to have some of those scores for you out of uh, District 5, 4A as the night progresses and uh, of the rest of District 6, 4A as well. Gene again under center. Three backs behind him in the power backfield look. Double tight ends. Gene play action, setting up, looking to throw. Throwing out, has an open receiver. Almost a great oh. one-handed catch. He cannot come down with the football was Lynn Williams. It was slightly over his head and over the back shoulder. He extended with one arm and almost brought it in. It would have been enough for the first down, but he's not able to make the connection. So it's fourth down, and the Elks will be forced to punt into the stiff wind once again. Well, that was a, uh, as you said, that was a great call. You can hear the uh, Burleson coaches next door slamming their hand down. They know they just barely missed uh, moving the ball down the field, and that's one thing they really need to do here. News getting set to punt again for the Elks. Back deep is Feltz and Gunn this time. Snap back and the punt is away. Rolling punt will hit at the 45 and will be taken by Feltz in jacket territory across the 50. Cuts up and is swarmed under at about the 47 yard line. Much better downfield coverage for the Elks after the 31 yard punt. First and 10, Steamville and a flag has come in at about the 44 yard line of Burleson. That looked like a block coming back. Uh, let's see if that's against Steamville. Waiting for the official. Yeah. It is a block in the back against Stephenville. So the ball was spotted at the uh, 45 and spot of foul penalty about the same place. And so this will move the ball back into Stephenville territory and they'll spot the ball at the 45 of Stephenville. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets leading 21 to nothing here at the 206 mark of the first quarter of Bank of America bringing us that. Well, Burleson just uh, can't get anything going on offense and this is just murder for a defense that's already given up 21 points in uh, just under 10 minutes. Jackets line up, Kendall under center this time. Play action, setting up in the pocket, looking to throw in some trouble. But we'll throw the deep ball for Cody Avalos. It's under thrown and almost picked off by Josh Mobley. And that was with the win, and it was a considerable five to ten yards under thrown. You kind of think maybe that Kendall was trying to take the big wind into consideration and took some of it off of it. May have also been hit when he let it go. He was hit just as he uh, let it go and didn't really get to didn't really get to step into the pass. Kirkland, uh, number 46, came in and uh, did the damage. And remember, he was limping earlier after that one play, Boots. He's noticeably limping now. It could be a long night for that young man. Twins to the far side, one to the near side. The one receiver is O'Neill as Browse is again under center. He will send Gunn now in motion to the same side as O'Neill. Play action throwing out to Gunn. Gunn gets one block, but not another. A good open field tackle made after a gain of two yards. The open field tackle made by Burleson's Corey Deaton. Well, that was a great open field tackle. Uh, uh, Doty uh, was the guy that wanted that they wanted to get out there and make the block, but uh, uh, the tackle from uh, Burleson came before he could even get out there. That was just great defense. Corey Deaton, 5'8", 165. A nice job to bring down the 200-pound gun. Now Browson, shotgun, two back standing next to him. Twins to the far side, one receiver near side. Play action, looking to throw, finds Hunter across midfield, cuts up and goes out of bounds at the 49-yard line. A pickup of about five on the play. So now it's fourth and four for the Jackets, and you probably expect them to go for it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, one good thing Zach did there is he got out of bounds and stopped the clock with the, the wind still at your back, and I think you definitely uh, go for it here. And so bring in some uh, extra guys. Uh, Colt Melton came in. He's out to the far side. Fourth and four. Browse behind, under center, pitching back to Hunter. Hunter cuts it up, has the first down inside the 40. Great move, 35, inside down to the 30, down to the 27-yard line. You got to see the speedy feet of Zach Hunter as he makes a big run to get the Jackets there. First down on the fourth down attempt. Actually, the 28 is where the spot will come. Yeah, they're gonna mark it at 28. So officially crediting him with 21 yards. Zach Hunter. First and 10 for the Jackets at the 28. Browse under center, two backs behind him. Wooten is the tailback. I believe that was the first design running play, wasn't it? Of the night. Wooten now comes in motion. 
Browse rolling to the same side, throwing across the middle. Has O'Neill caught, 10 to the 5, keeps his feet moving to the 4-yard line. Pickup of 24 yards, and Stevenville has another first down, first and goal to go from just inside the 5. I think that should uh, just about put Browse over 100 on the night in the first quarter. Boy, if you can figure that out over a full game, that could be a huge night for that young man, but I don't see that happening. Browse is under center now. He'll come out and shotgun and send four receivers to the far side. Three of those are in a wingback look. Now Browse is rolling in motion to the opposite side. He'll cut it up by himself. Kendall Browse, touchdown. The keeper from four yards extends the score now. 27 to nothing at the 33-second mark of the Bank of America first quarter. PAT upcoming. I know Steve Ross was uh, down there on the sideline. Was that, uh, was that Tate? I, didn't, I couldn't see the numbers that got that big block. Yes, it was, John. And if I could have gone five yards out on the field, I'd have high-fived him. That's as good a <laughs> pancake block by a tight end there in the end zone as you'll ever see. He just drove his man for about the three-yard line all the way onto his back two yards deep in the end zone. Just a textbook job by Tate. Do you want to see Steve Ross out on the field? Sure. All right. I, I like him right there in front of the band. Go that, for it, Steve. That was good. Patronus getting set for the extra point. Snap back. Hold down. Kick on the way is up and good. Welcome back. Jackets getting set to kick off here with 33 seconds remaining. That last scoring drive, six plays, 55 yards, took a minute, 33 browse on the four-yard run. PAT good, 28 to nothing. Deep end over end kick that will hit about two yards short of the end line and then bounce across the end line for another touchback. That scoring summary brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Well, I've got some scores out of uh, Brownwood uh, on top now. Burleson 14 to nothing in the first. Or Joshua. Uh, over Joshua and District 5-4-A. Listen to these scores. Andrew seven in the second quarter. Andrew seven, Sweetwater seven. First quarter, Lakeview 14, Big Spring nothing. Whoops. First quarter, Fort Stockton 17, Snyder nothing. Are you sure? That's what they're telling me. No, it's Snyder's 3-0, Fort Stockton hadn't won a game. Well, we'll have to get verification on that. It's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? Owen, get verification. <laughs> Play action now handing the ball to Kirkland. Good running room across the 25 out to the 28-yard line. A pickup of eight for that young man. Second down and two for the Elks coming up. Wow. But even more important than the Big Spring Snyder game, because Snyder already has three wins in the district, they're going to get out, is if Big Spring loses at San Angelo Lakeview and goes one and three, that really almost puts a scenario where Andrews and Sweetwater both get into the playoffs. Well, let's see. It'd be one and three. It would. It, well, it, no. It'd still come down to next week. With, well, they can lose. That, that's right. That is the end of the Bank of America first quarter. We start the second quarter, handoff over the left side. Kirkland has the first down and more across the 40. Good hard running out to the 45-yard line, and the late flag comes in. This may be a face mask. Yeah, I think it is. Run of 16 yards for Kirkland and the first down, and you could probably tack on either five or 15 more, depending on the variety of the face mask call. Wait and see. It will be the five-yard garden variety, so they'll take the ball to the midfield stripe, and this will be a deepest penetration on most of the game for Burleson, parking the ball right on the 50-yard line. We start the Cook Lumber second quarter with Stephenville leading 28 to nothing. Here's the uh, numbers from the first quarter. 64 rushing, 102 passing for 166. Six first downs for Stephenville. 10 rushing, no, no passing for a total of 10 yards, one first down for Burleson. Twins to the near side, split backs now behind. Gene handed the ball to the second man through. That's Kirkland. Kirkland will go forward for about two yards, and it will set up second down and eight. This is a young man that was limping badly early, and uh, he's running hard. Still, now he doesn't seem to be limping as bad right now. Get a couple of positive runs that kind of get you fired up. 17 yards gets it flowing a little bit inside you, I would think. 
Boy, Stephenville coaching staff is going to be interested to hear these scores out of District 5 4 a Boy, especially hold if Lakeview can hold on and beat Big Spring. And Sweetwater can beat Andrews. How about that? Hand off to Kirkland. Kirkland spins away from Harris, but uh, only gets two more yards. So it will set up third down and six for the Elks. And this now is officially the deepest penetration of the game for Burleson. Um, didn't Coach Brawl say that we were scouting the uh, Andrews Sweetwater game yes. tonight? Yeah. Okay. That at the bowl. And even though Andrews came in by most polls as a two touchdown favorite, he said, don't ever count out Sweetwater, especially at the bowl yeah. with that big rivalry game. Third and six for the Elks. Play action. Gene setting up in some trouble, and he will be sacked back in Stephenville territory. Scott Lee and Harris getting on top of Chris Gene after he made two men miss. It'll set up fourth down, and the Elks will be forced to punt. Um, yeah, a good back to what you said, especially uh, Sweetwater at home, big rivalry game, and the fact that losing that game last year really cost them a good chance at the at the playoffs. And I, I think maybe they uh, that might be some motivation for them as well. It's fourth down and 11. And the punter from Burleson, that is Paul Muse, is wanting to get a player on the sideline to get into the middle of the field. Finally, he does because he felt like he didn't have enough. Snap back to Muse. Kick is away with the win. Good kick will hit at the five and roll into the end zone. 40, uh, excuse me, 51-yard punt for Muse. Boy, they barely got that right. And uh, one second left on the 25-second clock. Stephenville now with uh, their furthest way away from the goal line, and I think they started the, what, 21, 22, one time? Sure. Well, and with the majority of their plays in the first quarter with the win, throwing the ball, Johnny, do we start running it now? I doubt it. All right. Maybe, though. I just asked. I don't know. Browse under center, two backs behind him. The tailback, Hunter, comes in motion to the near side, throwing quickly to the tight end. That's Mackins, who was in a slot, rather, out to the 30, across the 31, makes a man miss, gets to the 33-yard line, and enough for the first down after the 13-yard completion on the hot pass to the flanker. Well, and, and you know, the neat thing about the reason I said I doubt it, uh, at some point, Boots, as you well know, if you play far enough in the playoffs, you're going to have a windy day and you're going to have to throw the football. So, uh, you know, they've got to figure, figure, well, let's work on it, you know, throwing it into the wind as well. Browse is under center. One back behind him. Play action. Browse looking to throw. Wanting to throw the deep ball into the wind. Has Avalos. The ball is underthrown. Avalos tries to go back and get it. Cannot. And that's certainly a scenario of trying to throw into that wind. And Browse was trying to air that one out about 40 to 45 into the wind. And I don't care who you are. That's going to be tough to do. Yeah, uh, you could see it about uh, midfield. The ball just started slowing down, which uh, it ended up throwing it about 35, 40 yards. But you know, that is a that's a tough win down there right now. Boy, and into that win, I think Browse is going to have to make his decisions that much quicker because he's going to have to let it go to allow his receivers to run under it with it into the wind instead of trying to lead them the other way. Handoff straight up the middle to the fullback, Haney. <laughs> Haney gets out to the 41-yard line only because he can't get his own guys out of the way. Uh, who was that? Haney picks up about seven, eight yards, and so it'll be third down and short for Stephenville. I think that was Smithwick that he was trying to get over, and that's, uh, that's not an easy task. That's a big man. <laughs> Lying down, he's taller than I am. So Browse is under center once again with the uh, tailback is Walker. Walker takes the handoff. We'll have enough for the first down and gets across the 45, 46, 47 yard wow. line. And that'll be enough for the first after the strong carry of about six yards. Well, it's going to be almost eight, I think. First to 10 for the Jackets here at 840 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Steamville 28, Burleson nothing. They seem to be satisfied to run the football right now. Browse under center once again. Now play action to Walker. Browse rolling out, throwing out the flats. Has Hunter low but caught. 45 inside down to the 40-yard line where he's run out of bounds. Very close to the yardage needed for a first down. They'll actually say he's out at the 41, and that is enough. First down on the 11-yard completion from Browse to Hunter. You know, uh, Zach had to kind of slow down and go down to get the football. As soon as he did that, did you see that burst of speed? And 
really that's what got him the uh, first down is he caught the ball at back what about the 47 yard line and then just shot toward the out of bound line it's like he paused momentarily to make sure he gathered in the ball and then kicked it in first and ten for the jackets brawl center center pitch to the near side is wooten wooten cuts up gets inside the 40 to the 39 flags come down that might be a hold on stevenville right there that will stop the clock with the uh, call yeah, going back to what's going on in District 5-4-A, if Sweetwater holds on to beat Andrews, Andrews would go to 2-2. Two and two. Sweetwater would go to 3-1. and one. Angelo Lakeview would go to 2-2. Two and two. And Big Spring would go to 1-3 and three and would practically be out of it. Would they or would they not, even though they're playing Sweetwater in the last week? Because then Lakeview now with two wins gets brought back into the mix who would have beat Big Spring. Yeah, that's a good point. Because uh, it's almost like you have a possibility of having more teams tied with the same record to go in the playoffs that you'll have to go to a point system. I wonder if that'd put Lakeview in big school. This is getting way too confusing. Brawl setting up in the pocket, throwing across the middle, has Hunter. It's slightly underthrown and almost intercepted. Kyle Hoax had a chance to pick that one off. Bryles just quite didn't put enough on it. And you see him coming to the sideline, shaking his hands, his head, and is a little frustrated with himself. He had Hunter clearing in the seam. Yeah, if it's not a, if he's not throwing into a 30 mile an hour wind, that's six right there. Yeah, you could just, once again, see the ball just, just get held up. Trips to the near side, one to the, uh, excuse me, trips to the far side, one to the near side. Hunter stands next to Bryles as the Jackets go with the no-huddle offense, look to the sideline for the play, and now Bryles audibleizes at the line. Second and 20 for the Jackets after the penalty. Snap back, inside trap hand off to Hunter. Big runner and crosses 45, 40, makes another man miss. 35 down to the 31-yard line, and he will be about one yard short of the yardage needed for the first down. They'll actually spot Hunter now at the 32. So Steamboat will have third and about a yard and a half upcoming. 18 yards on that carry, and that was a just great up, straight up blocking by the offensive line there. And I don't think that play necessarily surprised anybody. There just wasn't anybody in the white shirt that could stop that one. Third and long one for the Jackets. Bryles under center with Walker, the tailback. Walker takes the handoff, has the first down, powers his way to the 29-yard line. First to 10 for Stephenville at the 29 of Burleson. 7-16 and counting here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. 28-0 Stephenville over Burleson, week nine of the year. Steve looking to extend the winning streak to 19 straight. Walker on the sideline favoring his right leg a little bit after he got that three tough yards for the first. Bryles is now in shotgun, rolling to the far side after taking the snap. He's in some trouble. Will make two men miss. Now come to the near sideline and run. Goes to the 30, inside 29, and will run out of bounds at a 28-yard line. Good pursuit. <laughs> by Kyle Hoax, who then uh, sets up the did a little hoax dance. Uh, okay, big fella. That's a lot of running for a yard, isn't it? <laughs> Man, he just... I don't know, and Hoax is the guy that missed the interception a while ago, too. So yeah. maybe he's upset. Yeah, that's probably right. Second down and nine for the Jackets. Ball just inside the 29-yard line. 6.50 and counting 28 nothing Stephenville. Browse is in shotgun since two to the far side. One to the near side, double wing back look as Bryles once again rolls to the far side. Throwing out into the flats, has O'Neill, great catch, then drops it. O'Neill's head, you could see it turn up field before he had tucked that ball under. Would have been a 15 yard catch, and enough for the first. Instead, it's now third down and nine. You mentioned Walker kind of limping around there uh, as he came out a moment ago. He, he's still stretching down on the sideline, but looks like he wants to get back in pretty quick. Hey, Ross, go ask him if he's all right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> he says he's fine. Twins to the far side. Bryles under center. Hunter behind him. Third down and nine. Wingback look on the left side as well. Now Hunter comes in motion. Throwing the quick hitter to Douglas. 20 inside the 15. Down to the 10-yard line is the big range he tied in. Picks up a 20 yards on the reception, and it's first and goal to go from the Jackets at the 10-yard line. Play that was open earlier to Hunter. This time, uh, TJ. TJ having a good night tonight. One of his better nights of the uh, of the season as far as uh, receptions. Yardage-wise, he now has 54 catches on 54 catches, 54 yards on three catches. Browse is under center. 
play action. Now rolling to the far side. Brawl sending up, throwing out to Hunter. Caught it around the five. Flags come down, and he goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. This was thrown by the side judge in which Hunter was coming at. The official threw the flag right over Hunter's head back at the line of scrimmage. Defensive holding, maybe. Illegal man downfield against Stephenville. One of the linemen releasing a little bit quickly, and that never makes Randy Clements very happy. Uh, Coach Clements will uh, want to know who that was. So that'll mark up, uh, excuse me, that'll back up Stephenville to the 15-yard line after the five-yard penalty. Coach Clements not happy. <laughs> He's shaking his head. <laughs> Oh, boy. First to go to go for Stephenville at the Burleson 15, 28 nothing. Stephenville at the 6-12 mark of the Cook Lumber second quarter. Bryles is under center. Three receivers far side. Play action. Throwing out in the flats. Two Mackins, but it's over his head. Bring up second Man. down in goal. Did you see that block downfield by Smithwick at about the three, four yard line? That was... Um, well, if he was at the three or four yard line, that may be one of the reasons we're getting illegal men downfield. That was Kyle Hoke, a sophomore. What is he, about 4'6"? I mean, 5'6", not 4'6". His <laughs> number is four. 41. He has got pancaked by Smithwick. Yeah, yeah, good point. Split receivers to both sides. Uh, Haney is at the fullback. Hunter the tailback. Hunter now goes in motion to the far side. Bryles is under center. Play action now giving the ball to Haney. Haney powers his way to the 10. So it'll be third and goal to go from the 10 yard line. Well, second quarter going by a lot faster than that, that first one. A lot of that has to do with the running plays, I think, for Stephenville. Well, this drive has taken quite a long time yeah. as well for normal Stephenville drives. Drive started at what time, Jake? It's taken about four minutes this drive has so far. That's a long drive for the Stephenville Yellow Jackets. Twins to the far side, one to the near side. Matkin has had a wing on the right side with Hunter in the backfield. Now Hunter comes in motion. Browse in shotgun, running the shovel pattern to Matkins, to the 10, to the 5, across touchdown. I love that play. 5.21 to go is when the play comes. Steve Millick now extends 34 to nothing with the extra point up coming here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. I saw that one coming, and I was just about to say, Boots, I hope you like the way this turns Did you out. see Mackett's? It looks like he couldn't decide where to get set when he was at the right <laughs> flanker or wing back, but he sure knew what to be, where to be on the inside shuttle pass, and, I hope boy, Coach I've Brown cussed that <laughs> play for years. And I, I just, hope Coach Brown says something to you about that play. I just got on the bandwagon all of a sudden. Snap back, kick on the way. The extra point is up, and it is good. of the KSTV sports team between the in commercials. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> 5.17 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville 35, Burleson nothing. We're just complimenting the three amigos. That's the best look we've seen in the stands yet. In a long time. One of them is Gene Simmons. Is that end over end, pooch kick will come down at the 28-yard line by verging into the wind, making the fair catch for the Elks is Justin Bazden. All right, well, disregard everything we told you earlier. I thought this was going to be wrong. We uh, found out. That's yeah, right. Snyder is uh, is ahead in the Fort Stockton game 17. All right, so we did get verification on that, but the other two scores do stand. As far as I know. All right. It is a uh, first and 10 for the uh, Elks at their own 29-yard uh, line. That's why you always have to double-check some things yes. that don't look right. Last scoring drive, 15 plays, 80 yards. It took 425, that 10-yard shuttle pass from Matkins, from uh, from Bryles to Matkins. Scoring summary brought to you by Loopies. Shotgun, Gene throwing out over the head of the intended receiver. Trying to make the catch going into the air was Kirkland. It was high over his head. Feltz had the coverage. It's second down and 10 after the incompletion. We do need a, a, an update on that big spring uh, game, though, because that is a... That is an important uh, score right there for sure. Especially Big Spring losing like they were. Second down and 10 for. Second down and 10 for. <laughs> yeah, because the Fort Stockton Snyder, even though 
we had it flip-flop. That game is not near as important because Snyder has pretty much wrapped up the district championship. Yeah, sure. Second and 10, deep snap to Gene, throwing out the flats ball. It's tipped up, incomplete as that was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Is that Carroll? I think it was Gordon Carroll that got his hand up. Well, Scott agrees with you. So it's third and 10 for the Elks. Now going with the win, you've noticed that the Elks have gotten out of that power running look and have gone to the shotgun formation, trying to throw with the wind. Right now on both sides of the ball, uh, Steve, uh, Stephenville's line are just dominating this football game as, as we've seen that the last two or three weeks uh, here in the, as we close, begin to close out District 6-4A play. Third and 10, once again in shotgun is Gene. Two back standing next to him, throwing across the middle, high over the head of the intended oh, receiver. Look at, look at Gene. He just got smacked by Ryan Harris, who came flying in it back to the 20-yard line. Anderson was the intended receiver over his head, and you know, you talked about that, Johnny, and after I watched the play and then looked back to the quarterback, if he's still on the ground. He's been there a while. Yes. Yeah. And he was, uh, he did get back up, but he's, he stayed down for a minute. I think he just wanted to make sure that all flying uh, objects had passed over his head at that point. Muse getting set to punt for the Elks. Muse's first punt attempt with the win. Speaking of punting attempts, Steamville has not punted in the last two weeks. Snap back to Muse low, but handled. Kick is away, almost blocked by Scott Lee. Deep kick will go over the head of Feltz. Didn't judge it very well, and this one will roll all the way inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Feltz looked like he was gonna make the catch around the 25 yard line, and I think the wind took it more than he was expecting. It hits at the around the 25 yard line, it goes to the nine. 62 yards on the punt from Muse, and that'll help the average. Yeah, that was about, uh, about 20 of that after it hit the ground. But still, so a good kick with the win. That's a, certainly, if you're gonna, you're gonna get Stephenville the ball back, you might as well make them have to go over 90 yards. Well, these are stats that uh, Steve Ross was concerned about earlier. Well, they'll go. make up for themselves right now. Bryles is in shotgun, twins to the near side, one receiver far side, double wing back look split to both sides. Bryles away in the snap in shotgun, rolling, drops the ball, then picks it up, and now he'll run across the five. Now he'll let the ball go flying out to Avalos at the 25-yard line, catches up to the 29-yard line, and Bryles let it go around the six or seven, but it sure looked after he fumbled it momentarily and brought it to himself after dribbling it, if you will. He was going to run, but just before he crossed the line of scrimmage, he throws a dart to Avalos, first down, Stephenville. First and 10 for the Jackets out at the 28 yard line of their own 419 and counting. Steve leading 35 nothing over Burleson. Faking the trap and the throwing out to Mackins. Mackins make one man miss across the 30, 35, and then run out of bounds at the 36 yard line. A pickup of about seven yards. It'll be second down and three as you see the officials keep the clock rolling even though he went out of bounds. Well, uh, coming into this game, Stephenville only needed uh, 237 yards of offense to go over 4,000 on the season. I think pretty safe to say they've done that. They had 166 in the first quarter. So they're on pace for another big night tonight offensively. Power handoff to Wooten. Wooten behind a big up front jumbo package. Gets the ball to the 39-yard line. That is enough for the first down as he picks up four yards. Stephenville will move the chains. After they set the uh, sticks, it'll be running 329 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Bryles in uh, shotgun will come forward, get out to the 45-yard line. I went to sleep for a second. Excuse me. I thought you might have fallen out of the window there. <laughs> Six yards. <laughs> looked down for a second to look at a stat and looked up. We'd already snapped the ball. Bryles uh -huh. credited with six yards, moves the ball to the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and four. That's a bad feeling as a play-by-play -play man to look up. Ball's already been snapped. 250 and counting. 
I had a I had a really weird dream last night. I'd tell you about. <laughs> Boy, this is bad. We're already talking about weird dreams. <laughs> Involves Ross and me, so it's a morning choke out of his eight. I think Steve's a little nervous right now. <laughs> Browse under center, throwing the quick pass to Douglas again. The hot pattern is successful. Gets down to the 40-yard line. Boy, you hear the coaches next door slam their business like, okay, we're gonna have to, I think we're going to have to defend that one, boys. Gain of 14 on the play, maybe 15, depending on the spot. So me and Ross were playing guitars <laughs> at a coffee house. <laughs> <laughs> this is great already. <laughs> <laughs> Steve uh, played a snappy little number he'd written. <laughs> but he's taking a lot of grief right now on the sideline. You might want to wait to tell <laughs> yeah. the rest of this story. Okay. Twins to the near side, one to the far side. Browse is in, sh in shotgun with Hunter standing next to him. High snap over the head of Browse. Hooten runs it down. I mean, I should say Hunter runs it down across <laughs> midfield. <laughs> Who the heck is Hooten? <laughs> well, he's assistant basketball coach oh, at Tarleton. I don't think he has that's, any eligibility. That's, that's the combination of Wooten and Hunter. Hooten. <laughs> Sorry. I wonder where that came Snap from. Snap went through Brow's hands, and luckily Hunter was back there, gathered it up, moved the ball forward, uh, almost back to the line of scrimmage at the 40, actually the 42, so it's second down and 12. So Ross is playing a snappy little tune on his guitar in the coffee shop I think we during just the stream. Leave it right there. All right, Ross is under center. <laughs> Going quickly out to Hunter. Gets one good block from TJ inside the 40, 35. Knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A pickup of about six to seven. Boy, you're right. That was a good block by TJ. He, he came peeling back and really got uh, Zach around the corner. 34-yard line is the spot. So it will be third down and four for the Jackets. 114, excuse me, 115 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. 35 0 Stephenville. And this is a nice opportunity for the Jackets to work on their two minute offense. Burleson has taken a timeout. Welcome back. We still are in the timeout. Third down and five for Stephenville. One fifteen to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. A similar situation to last week at Joshua when Stephenville was trying to get one score in before the end of the half. A little more difficult to Joshua because the clock was not working. Stephenville got to the one foot line when time expired. At least that's what the official said. Browse and other staff who were watching their own clock did not think so. Stephenville did not come away with a score. We'll see if they have better results this week. Browse is under center, sends Matkins in motion. Inside trap handoff to Hunter, trying to get to the outside, and he'll be tackled for a loss back at the 36-yard line. It'll set up fourth down now and six for Stephenville into the win. Do have an update on those scores from District 5-4-A. Snyder on top of Fort Stockton, 17 to nothing. It is... Uh, Late in the first quarter, uh, Angelo, Lakeview 14, Big Spring nothing. Uh, late in the second quarter, Andrews 14, now Sweetwater 7. Andrews starting to uh, extend a little bit there. Now Browse in shotgun, fourth down, looking to throw. Looking to throw for the deep ball. Knocked away at the last second. Trying to make a great catch after the tip away was Sean Tate. Browse under through that one just a hair as the defensive man was able to reach back and knock the ball away from Tate, who was open. And once again, Johnny, I think you saw the indication of the wind. If there's no wind, that ball is right in Tate's hands at the five, and he strides in for a score. Just a great defensive play by Metcalf, who's obviously a lot uh, shorter. And uh, he just jumped up at the last minute. They, he just made a great defensive play. That was a beautiful pass. Great route by Tate. Just a good defensive play. Twins to the near side, I formation behind Gene. Gene straight ahead, hand off to Kirkland. Kirkland will get about two yards, and that will be it. 30 seconds remaining here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. The Jackets will be willing to let it go off, or will they? No, a timeout has been taken by Burleson. Burleson has taken the timeout, 22 seconds remaining. We'll take one with him back in 30 seconds on KSTV. And uh, welcome back. There are two minutes remaining. I should say two yards needed after the game. Two yards gained. 22 seconds remaining. 
Bob Haskey, if you're listening, Steve Ross uh, needs to talk to you. Something important. Would you please find Steve Ross on the sideline, Bob Haskey. Second down and eight for uh, the Burleson Elks. Snap back in shotgun. Going out and is caught at the 35 and then tackled at the 38-yard line is Michael Anderson. Completion on the throw from Chris Jean. It will now set up third down and about six needed. Eight seconds, seven seconds, and counting. Burleson will hurry to the line. Don't know if they can get this one off. Uh, Two seconds, one. What is Muse doing? The punter will run to the... What was that about? Muse was the punter. Decided that he wouldn't even tell the rest of his teammates that he was going to run to the dressing room. All the punting line got in line formation. About to get underway as Harris getting set to kick off with the win. Back deep again for the Elks is Dustin Kirkland. Kick is away, and Kirkland will watch this one go over his head and out the back of the end zone. And Harris and one of the Elks have uh, reached a little WWF uh, scuffle, Offside. if you will, at the 50-yard line. Offside, Stephen. Kick. Let's see what they do. They may just take it at the 20. Because I think just five yards, he still kicks it out of the end zone. Offsides is against Stephenville. Let's find out what they're going to do. And Burleson will say, let's kick it again. Harris says, good. I get, to get that number 60 guy again. <laughs> get another shot at him. Nathan Hinkle, the young man that uh, Harris got tied up with. I think he could probably kick it in the end zone again. From the 35, give him a little bit extra incentive. <laughs> I was kind of hoping Corey Frills would do about like Harris did. Really get it up high in the air like that. Let the wind take it. It was hard. It was a line drive kick. Never got much higher than the crossbar, and because of that, it was just a little short. But you're right. If he gets a little bit more on it as far as upward motion. That's why I always like to play golf on a windy day when you get those holes out of the south. And you, you use a three-wood and get it up in the air. It looks like you really did something. <laughs> Get a wedge, I guess, and go pin it on this wind especially, tonight. <laughs> especially when you've been in Erath County and you haven't seen rain in about three years. Fairways tend to run a little farther. Pretty good little roll, don't you? Harris will now back it up five yards after the Jackets were offside. He'll kick from the 35. Kirkland moves up to the goal line. Harris approaches the ball. The kick is away. This is a little wobbler kick that will hit at the five and go through the back of the end zone. All of that for naught. And so the Elks will begin once again, first and 10 at their own 20. Number 60, uh, Hinkle went, af went after Colt Melton. That, that, was a pretty, that was a little better matchup there, I think. Melton held, held his own. Well, Melton comes into the game at 5'8", 150 pounds. I think after you try to take on Harris at 6'200", you go look for someone else, and Melton still held his own. Yes, he did. First and 10 for the Elks at their own 20 yard line, just underway here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Stephenville 35, Burleson nothing. It's the power backfield, double tight end set as Chris Jean is under center. Long snap count for Jean. Play action, looking to throw. Has an open receiver, trying to make the catch for Burleson, but through his hands or a little past his hands was Lynn Williams. It's the same play we saw earlier when Williams almost had a chance to make a one-handed catch, incomplete brings up second and 10. Well, at least they tried throwing into this win, and that's what they're gonna have to do here in this third quarter, because they obviously are not able to run the football consistently. They have made some, some good rushes tonight, but not consistently against this front, especially the front seven. So it is second down and 10. Gene again is under center. Two backs behind him this time. Handing the ball to the second man through, that's Kirkland. Kirkland will get close to the line of scrimmage and then be driven backwards by Harris. Harris, the first man there with a whole host of other blue jerseys. It'll bring up third down and now long. Steamville really uh, juggling that uh, defensive line as far as guys moving around. On the first down, uh, Scott Lee was in a defensive tackle. That time out at a stand-up defensive end along with Carroll on the other side, and then Harrison and uh, Harmon in the middle. 
So it'll be third down and 11 for the Elks. Chris Jean brings him up to the line. Jean will be under center. Two backs behind him, split receivers. Play action, looking to throw, going out in the flats over the head of the intended receiver. Intended receiver to the near side was Paul Mews. So they lose, what, a yard? On the, the first half they had how many yards? 29, so that's 28 yards in about 25 minutes of game time. Fourth and 11 for the Elks, and just like you talked about uh, as we started the third quarter, Johnny, that if you could force the Elks into three and out and punt into this wind, it sets you up a lot better than taking the football. Mews gets set to punt from about his own 10-yard line, snap back, kick is away. End over end kick, good kick that takes a great bounce for Burleson, comes up to the 39-yard line where Feltz takes it, flags down across midfield to about the 48-yard line. This one will probably be coming back. 43 yards on the punt into the wind. Mews having a nice day punting the football. And that was a good punt because he did a line drive and he got it away from Feltz where Feltz had to turn and chase it. And that was, I think that was pretty much the result of that push in the back. So from the uh, spot of the foul, which was at about the same place the play ended, they'll mark the ball back to the 41-yard line after the penalty is marched off. Pretty much the same 11 that started this game on offense now going to start just as the uh, defense did a moment ago. 10.36 to go in the Texas Bank third quarter. Stephenville 35, Burleson nothing. Trips to the far side, one receiver near side. Hunter is the tailback. Bryles is under center, first and 10 at their own 41. Hunter now comes in motion to the near side. Bryles straight drop, setting up seven-step drop, looking to throw, looking to throw. Now he'll run. Gets away from one, but not the second man. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, a gain of one for Bryles. And you know, John, when Burleson continues to drop seven or eight people, it, it's a little bit harder to find the open receivers. Yeah, it is. That was a great tackle that time by that freshman defensive uh, end, Dean Smith. And I think you're beginning to see why uh, that young man is up there starting on defense. He's, he's had a pretty decent night, actually. Second down and nine for Steve Mill. Twins to the near side, one to the far side. Browse is in shotgun now with Hunter standing next to him. Tight end set, giving the ball straight ahead to Hunter. Across 45, midfield, across 45, 40. Coming to the near side, 32, excuse me, 37-yard line is where Hunter finally ends up. As quick as I could say 45, he was at the other 45. Down to the 37-yard line. First down, Stephenville, 20 two yards on the carry for Hunter. Man, that was quick, wasn't it? I think that puts Hunter well over 50 yards, doesn't it? Yeah, Doty and Doty pulling around from the uh, left side, and boy, they just blew open big holes. First to 10 at the 37 of Burleson for Stephenville. Bryles in shotgun now, setting up, looking to throw. Still looking now across the middle, too low for Avalos. Looked like Avalos was clearing and uh, was open down around the 15, and the uh, there again, Kendall trying to keep it out of the wind. Second down and 10 for the Jackets. With the wind, whether Kendall is with it or against it, his decisions have to be made so much quicker. Seems to be more coaches on the sideline here in the second half. Seems to be less in the press box. Second down uh, and 10. Twins to the near side, trips to the far side. Jackals in the no huddle look as Kendall gets the play from the sideline via the hand signal. Now flags come down, or do they? Yes. This was thrown right at the feet of O'Neill, who split to the far side. This is a dead ball. You get a spot and then move. Illegal motion. That must be the case because O'Neill's out there talking with the side judge, and they're having a conversation. This was dropped right at the feet of O'Neill, and I don't, I don't think O'Neill's very happy about it. I do would. That might be one of those ticky-tack fouls where he got set and moved like just a little bit. Well, the rules are the rules. Well, all right, even though it's 35 to nothing, it doesn't matter. Twins to the far side, one to the near side is Bashaw, Browse and shotgun with Hunter standing next to him. Just a three-man rush for the Elks, and because of that, Steam will run the football. Hunter up to the 40, down to the 39-yard line, a pickup of the five yards on the penalty. It'll be now third down and about 10 for Stephenville. Well, I still have a pretty good number of fans here at this game. Boots, I think we did lose a few at halftime, and that's understandable. Under nine minutes in the Texas Bank third quarter. 35-0. Steve Mill on top of Burleson. Steve Mill now with four receivers on the right side. Three of those are a wing back. Mackins has split the farthest as Bryles takes the snap in shotgun. 
Now looks to throw back and instead will keep it inside the 35, 30 to the 25. Stumbles, gets to the 24-yard line. Boy, he had his tight end clearing on the backside after the 14-yard run is enough for the first down. Yeah, but that's, uh, you know, that's not a bad decision by the quarterback right there to just take off and run. When everybody just, as we said earlier, turns and looks the other way. Sure. It's, it's hard not to, uh, to be tempted to run with the football right there. I'd like to see him come back to that play. They sent everyone to the right side, and Sean Tate was the lone receiver, the tight end on the left. Got left alone and was starting to clear. I bet that hot pass will be there right now if they want to go back to that. Bryles in shotgun. Twins to the near side, twins to the far side. Tight end look as well. Brow setting up, looking to throw, rolling out, still looking, still looking. Now throwing back across the middle, has his receiver, Bashaw caught, good block, down to the five, to the four, to the three-yard line. Coming back for a block was Matkins to get him the last couple of yards. 22 yards on the catch from Browse to Bashaw, and it'll be first to go for Stephenville at the three. Boy, and, and credit Josh, as you said, he, he ran down there and, uh, and then saw Kendall in a little bit of trouble rolling around. Came back, found an empty spot in the defense, and just sat down and waited on the ball to get there. That was uh, that was good play by the receiver. Hammer time look for the Jackets. Walker is the tailback with Haney and Howell, the fullbacks. Browse is under center. Giving to the second man through. Walker over the top. Is it enough? No signal, no signal. I believe it will be second down. Walker is spotted just short of the goal line. 7.36 and counting here in the Texas Bank third quarter 35 nothing steam mill steam will have second and goal to go from inside the one and you could pretty much go the same formation I think they are pretty quiet crowd tonight isn't it mm. two nights before Halloween yeah that's right I forgot about that got your costume Jim always wear it at all times browse is under center browse will give it to the first man through and I believe that was Haney over the top touchdown 707 mark of the Texas Bank third quarter 41 to nothing Stephen on top the extra point is upcoming yes Mr. Haney is the one that comes away with the football tosses it back to the official yet another touchdown for Derek Haney you know he's just quietly having a, a really nice season now his fourth rushing touchdown on the season. Eben Nelson getting set for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick on the way. It is up and it is good. Texas Bank third quarter. Steve will getting ready to kick off. Ryan Harris tees it up at his own 40 yard line. 42 to nothing. Stephenville on top. And Johnny, I imagine one more and Steve will just about pull the reins back, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would think so. That last scoring summary, eight plays, 59 yards, took 333. Haney on the one yard run. The PAT once again good. 42 to nothing. That scoring summary brought to you by Barnes and McCullen with that. Uh, Score here in the second half, Cheatham and Lansford making a nice donation to Project Hope. This ball will go over Kirkland's head and out of the back of the end zone again. And so another touchback for Ryan Harris's kick. And Bartleson began first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Did we have one update, Johnny? As out of District 7-3, I really no surprise. Breckenridge all over Comanche 52 to nothing now in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Elks at their own 20 and once again, starting on offense at the quarterback position, Chris Jean brings the Elks up to the line. On that uh, last pass, by the way, I meant to mention this while ago, Kendall Browse now over 2,000 yards passing on the season. Split receivers both sides, two backs in the backfield behind Jean taking the handoff. Is the uh, fullback Ben Rowe. Rowe will go forward for about a yard. Flags come down. Well, it's just unusual to see a number 90 taking a handoff out of the <laughs> backfield, isn't it? Yeah. I defensive uh, tackle I guess is why he can get away with that I, uh, but it, it you are correct offsides against Stephenville that's the third time we've seen that tonight on the defense that's the seventh penalty tonight in the game for 45 yards on the uh, yellow jacket well let's see if we can go down to Steve Rossi uh, I would think that everything uh, pretty relaxed and quiet on the sideline right now yeah you can get a card game down here if you wanted to <laughs> 
How's the, how's the health of everybody? Well, the good news is there has been no cross timbers orthopedic injury updates. I'll tell you after this play, I'm going to go try to find Craig Park, see how he's doing. All right. Hand off straight up the middle once again to Rowe, I believe. Rowe will get about uh, two yards. We'll wait for them, Paul. It is the uh, big fullback, 5'10", 195 pounds, senior Ben Rowe. Goes forward for two yards, so now it's second down and three for the Elks. Pretty impressed with the uh, special teams tonight, Boots. The, well, it's only twofold tonight, but kickoffs all, almost always in the end zone. And, and a uh, score on a punt return. Yeah, and the extra points uh, have been perfect all night. Under center, giving the ball straight ahead to Kirkland. Kirkland gets across the 30 to the 34-yard line, so a first down for the Elks out to the 34. Move the chains. 550 and counting here in the Texas Bank third quarter. 42 to nothing, Stephenville. A number of different guys now playing on defense uh, for the Yellow Jackets. That's pretty much the way we thought it would go. Maybe a series and then uh, rest some guys. And these are the guys uh, you're going to depend on when you get to the playoffs as well. These guys need to get some playing time, and that's one of the good things about having a run like this at the end of district play. Gene pitches back to Kirkland. Kirkland gets to back to the line of scrimmage when he is first hit by Jeff Scott coming in from the cornerback spot. Also Silva in and Medina on the tackle. Gets out to about the 36, 37 yard line and the Jackets is a little bit hurt, slow getting up. That's Kent Howell. As long as he's not limping, he is. He's a little bit. Well, we'll, uh, we'll let Steve Ross go over and see if there's anything of serious nature there, and then we'll come back in a moment. Two yards on the uh, pickup from Kirkland momentarily. It's going to take a lot to keep that guy on the lineup, you can bet. Second and eight for the Elks. Handoff to the tailback. Good rank for Cole Tucker. Gets across the 45 to the 46, 47 yard line. Sophomore picks up a first down with that approximate 10 yard scamper. Boy, I thought he was going to run it. Well, he did run over his blocker. That, that's uh, always dangerous, you know, running up on the back of him like that. Get an ankle or a knee twisted up. First and 10 for the Elks at their own 48 yard line. Now 439 and counting in the Texas Bank third quarter. Boy, you're right. He just got quiet. And our crowd mic is wide open right now. Three amigos still shaking their pants. <laughs> Having a great time. In the backfield is Tucker. He's in all kinds of trouble, and he's thrown down for a loss. Loss of about a yard on the play. It'll set up second down and 11. Boy, I hope the camera people get a picture of the three amigos in the stands. Second down and 11, three I'm sure they, uh... oh, there they go. <laughs> the Gene Simmons tongue is the best part about that. That's sick. <laughs> that is a. That's but a that is the greatest here. outfit I've seen yet. I saw that live. And believe me, it was, it was sick. You've seen Kiss in concert? Oh, yeah. Look that. Chris Gene, play action. Looking to throw. Deep ball on the far sideline. It's up. Great position with Jesse Fanning. Got between the intended receiver and the ball. Knocked it away on the far sideline. The receiver intended was Michael Anderson. Incomplete. It'll bring up now third down and 11. Cozy little place up in uh, Seattle, Washington, back when I was in the Army. We went and saw those guys. That was, that was pretty interesting. Where do you find a blue and gold sombrero? I don't know, but in, what are the Serapis? What, what are those? What are those nice ponchos, aren't they? <laughs> Third and 11. Everyone at home just has no appreciation of feeling for what we're talking about. Hand off to the backfield. Tucker makes one man miss, reverses his field, gets across midfield, makes another two miss, and gets very close to the yardage needed for the first down. Cole Tucker, 170-pound sophomore, running very nicely for the Elks. Will get about 10 to 11 yards. It was third and 11. Is it enough for the first down? They will take time to measure. You know something else about the folks at home? They're not having to call this game either. <laughs> well, good point. They're so we're uh, we're looking for anything. Um, I know Steve's had a chance to uh, talk to the uh, the medical staff down on the sideline. Maybe he can have an update for us. Yes, I do have a cross timber orthopedic injury update. It's good news on Ken Howell. A lot of people know he's had both knees operated on in successive years. He just got clipped from behind a little bit, but he's okay. And I talked to Craig Parks about how his knee's coming back from the knee strain he got a couple weeks ago, and he said, well. I can play in the Granberry game, but the doctors won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the coaching staff made it sound like earlier today 
He probably should, but we don't want to let him go. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a good point. I don't think he was through yet. Go ahead, Stevie. Well, Craig just told me he said, you know, I could play against Granberry if I had to, but we've already got the district crown tied up, so there's really no need in it. So they're just going to hold him out, continue to rehab, and get him back healthy for the playoffs. Fourth down and Oops. a foot, and earlier we saw Chris Jean try to draw the jackets offside. This time he was successful with the hard snap. Draws the jackets offside on the fourth and short, and that will move the ball to the 37-yard line, and it will be enough, obviously, for the first down. And yet another penalty in the uh, in the ball game. Uh, you know, we were talking about the uh, to total yardage coming into the game, Steamville with uh, 3,763. They'd only given up just over 2,000. Not given up very much tonight, so they're going to be almost 2-1 to one in offense versus the uh, yards they've given up. Pitch to the near side, Kirkland looking to cut up. He'll reverse his field and probably not a good decision as cratering down on him very quickly was Nathan Wilson for the big loss back at the 40-yard line, a loss of three. 42 to nothing, Steamville on top of Burleson with two and a half to go here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Yeah, that wasn't a good decision by uh, Kirkland to reverse his field. He thought he saw, maybe saw something good backside pursuit there by, by the Steamville defense. Second down and uh, 13 for the Elks. Once again, Chris Jean is under center. Eye formation this time. Handoff over the right side. Good runner in for Tucker. Makes a move inside the 30. Gets back. Pumbles the ball. It's loose. It's at about the 20-yard line. I believe Steve Mills gotten on it at the 19. That's exactly what happened in the first period. He just... Medina getting on the football for the Jackets. He was running in the open field, Johnny. You know, I don't know if Steve had a better view than I did up here, but it looked to me like he was changing hands from his right to his left hand, maybe, and that's what happened, Steve. It just looked to me like he came flying out of there. Really no explanation for that. He'd broken into the open field, and the ball just came squirting out like somebody punched it from behind, but there wasn't anybody within two yards of it. Well, that's weird. All righty, so it's first and 10 for the Jackets after the uh, turnover, and by far the best drive. For, uh, for the Elks tonight, and then another turnover. Twins to the far side, one receiver near side. Browse in the game, quarterback under center. Pitching to the near side, he throws it on the ground, and Hunter has to quickly go up and get the ball at the 19. It was a little bit of a low snap, and you see Kendall go quickly to Hunter and help him up and say, thanks, right. for, thanks for bailing me out on that one. Yeah, that, that wasn't my best effort right there. So a loss of... Uh, just a skosh on the play, maybe not any. It'll be second down and 10. A skosh? Maybe the first time I've used that term in a football game. And used it correctly, too. Thank I've you very pressed. much. <laughs> I miss a lot of putts by just that amount. By a skosh. Thank you. Yep. Second and 10 for the Jackets. Pitched much better this time, but the other way to Hunter. Finds a seam across the 25, 30, 35. He may go flags down. 50. No one will catch Hunter, I don't think. It's a good angle. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. The flags all the way back at the 25-yard line. So a race, an 81-yard run for Hunter as they will bring flags. This one was thrown at about the 25. It is a hold against Stephenville. That's the one Zach hadn't had this year. He's been so close. Remember the Brownwood game a couple of times, just barely from someone reaching out and grabbing his jersey. Finally broke one, and hmm. now it's going to be called back. You know, I think he's had a couple that have been called back this year yep. on long runs. That's a good point. So it's now going to be after they mark off the uh, penalty. They'll spot the run out to the 25-yard line. So credit Hunter with five yards and then oh, back man. it up 10 from there. That's a tough break. You know, it didn't look like he was going to get anything, did he? Or, you know, right about, I guess, where the penalty came. <laughs> well, he had a little seam for about five yards, and then he just exploded through all the white jerseys. See the speed of uh, Zach as we've seen it. Coming in, uh, as we told you earlier, coming into this game tonight, 3,249 yards of rushing in his career. That that includes the three yards his freshman year <laughs> in the Arlington Heights game. You remember that? They brought him in. <laughs> right. He had two carries for three yards. So <laughs> they all total up, don't they? Browse under center, second down and a 15 now. Fake to one side, then throw another great one-handed catch by Douglas. Gets the first down out to the 32-yard line. That was a zip bullet by Browns, and Douglas threw out one hand above his ear. Yes, O'Neill has brought it right back to his head. Good recovery. <laughs> Did I say Douglas? Twice. Sorry. <laughs> I said, was that O'Neill? Yes, it was. <laughs> O'Neill is a great catch. I apologize. I butchered that one. Well, that was the... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what the difference is between O'Neill and uh, Douglas? Just a skosh. So Seven numbers. <laughs> yeah, 88 and 81. Pretty similar body frames, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. All right. It's first down and 10 for the Jackets. Inside trap handoff to Water. Walker, 35 out to the 37-yard line. A pickup of about five yards. Well, he missed breaking that one by just a skosh. <laughs> we have abused that term. <laughs> I understand if you use the same word on a paper, they start counting off for it. So. Especially in the same paragraph. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we uh, <laughs> back to back sentences. Well, we're going to run another play. I 18 we're... seconds remaining here in the Texas Bank third quarter. This will probably be the last play of the third quarter. Browse and shotgun rolling to the near side, setting up, looking to throw, throwing out has O'Neill. Great catch. 45 40 down to the 35 34 yard line. That will stop the clock momentarily, or will it? It will not. The third quarter of Texas Bank comes to an end. Star Ford, fourth quarter. Doug Montgomery, you are a lucky, lucky man. <laughs> I thought he was going to give it away tonight. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, Shane just uh, handed this information to me. It has now uh, been decided. Honeybees will play Tuesday night in Weatherford at 7.30. Pitch to the near side. Hunter looking to cut up. 35 inside the 30. Great move to the outside. 25 gets down to the 24-yard line. 11 yards and a late flag as this is a hit out of bounds. And so Sonotsky is trying to get some of the guy that hit late. They will separate him from the pack and pull him to the sideline. 11 yards on the carry. And then you can tack on 15 on top of that. Uh, here's some scores for you, Boots, from uh, around the area. District 14, 1A in the third quarter. Toller 46, May 13. Big game for the Rattlers. And District 6, 12-6 uh, man, the big game up at Strawn. It is in the third quarter. Gordon 28, Strawn nothing. Mm. Well, Toller needs to win tonight, and they need to win next week against Gorman at Gorman for the Toller Rattlers to get into the playoffs as the second place representative. Ranger has already wrapped up that district. Ball is marched down to just outside the 12-yard line after the penalty. So Browns is under what center. Was that? Twins to the near side, one to the far side. Trap handoff inside to Hunter. 10 to the 5, gets close to the goal line. Touchdown! 12 yards on the carry for Hunter. Extends the score now 48 to nothing at the 11:36 mark of the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. The PAT upcoming. Should have saved that yow baby for that run, I sure. <laughs> that was great. The lost in powers emphasis. Virgin is now in the game for it to kick the extra point. Gone to the second string kicker. That says something. Snap back to Patronus. Hold down. Kick is on the way, and it is no good. But he was, he was Run over, I believe. You're right. Someone hit his leg. There's a flag down, and so that's why they'll probably kick this one again. This is a personal foul running into the kicker against Burleson. So they'll move the ball half the distance to the goal, take it to the one and a half. Boy, that's the cheapest personal foul there is. Get a yard and a half. Yeah. We're going to kick it again. Give Virgin another try. That wing back over there on the far side has been almost, he's been close a few times tonight. That time he got through, but missed the ball. So the Jackets will get set to try the extra point again. Patronus getting set. Snap back, hold down. Virgin's kick is on the way. It hits the crossbar and goes through.
Virgin who kicked the extra point, getting set for the kickoff into the wind. I would expect the pooch kick, if you will. It is to the near side, wind holding this one up nicely. It will be taken at the 30 yard line on a fair catch by Chris Thompson, an abbreviated fair catch. But I guess that is enough, and that's where the Elks will begin. First and 10 at their own 30. 11.27 to go here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Jackets getting a lot of different uh, people in there on defense right now. Some we've seen from a couple series ago, but everyone getting a lot of playing time right now. We'll get to some of those names in a moment. First and 10 for the Elks at their own 30. 49 nothing. Stephenville on top of Burleson. Two backs behind. Chris Jing, Gene looking to throw. The ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I believe that was Howell that got Maybe that was. one back in the game. Coach August, run the ball, please. <laughs> hey, what a fun conversation we had with Coach August earlier in the week. Big Stephenville fan. Yeah, he, and for a good reason, you know, I mean, as he said, I think he summed it up best when he told Steve Ross, I'm just a, I'm a fan of Texas high school football and it doesn't get a whole lot better than this right here. Twins to the far side, two backs in the eye formation behind Chris Jean once again under center, handing the ball to Kirkland. Kirkland finds a good seam across the 40, out to the 43 yard line, making the stop was Fanning for the Jackets. It is a first down and about 13 yards on the carry for Kirkland, who's starting to put together a pretty nice night. Ross, any chance you can get a uh, word down to the coaches uh, just to let them know this is the Rent City VCR giveaway quarter? We'd like to give away a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he will go to the first team D and send them out. Okay. <laughs> Twins to the near side again, I formation. Have we given away only one this year? Two. Oh, we have given away Last two. Week. Gene, handoff once again to Kirkland. Kirkland gets across the 45, dips back inside to about the 47-yard line. Pickup of almost five yards for... That man who now has 74, 75 yards in the game tonight, 14 carries. By the way, I had a little business to take care of that I forgot about that last scoring drive by the uh, Jackets, eight plays, 81 yards, only took 226. Hunter on that 12-yard run, PAT was good, 49-0. That scoring summary brought to you by the Walmart Vision Center. Second and five for the Elks. Once again, Gene under center, the two backs. This time we're offset with two receivers to the near side. The tight end now will flip-flop to the near side. Gene under center, pitching to the near side, now on a reverse. Taking the ball on the reverse is Snell. Snell will get back to the line of scrimmage, make one man miss, but not the next. He will get to the 50-yard line. Making the stop for the Jackets was Richie Patronis. A gain of about two, maybe three. So it sets up third down and three for the Elks. As Monty Derrick did to stay home over there, boots are slowing down until uh, he could get the defensive help coming on the uh, backside. That was, a, that was a nice play. They had it set up, but just a good play by Derrick. Third down and three for the Elks. The Elks are 0 of 8 on third down conversions this evening. Christine under center eye formation behind him. Handed the ball to Kirkland. Kirkland gets to the yardage needed for the first down. Maybe, no. depending on the spot. His knee went down early, and that is where they're going to spot it. So call it 0 for 9 on third down conversions for the Elks, and it'll be fourth and a long one. Obviously, they'll go for it now. Well, if Steve Bell can hold here, I think there would be a good chance they could take a lot of time off the clock boots on a, on a drive from 50 yards out. Fourth and almost two for the Elks. Gene again under center, two backs behind him, giving once again to Kirkland. Kirkland dives forward, and I think he did get the first down. And Boy, it's close. He's not getting a real good spot. Well, he's not. The he, guy on the near side spotting it. It's up at, right at the 47-yard line. and He may be short. He did not get a real good spot. I will give to credit to that young man. Dustin Kirkland, a junior, has run very hard tonight. Well, you're right. He, you're exactly right. They will bring in the chains. And remember, he was hurt early in the uh, in the game, early in the first quarter. Well, he had 74 yards before that carry, depending on the spot. So you're going to call it another two, maybe there. comes the chain gang <laughs> working on the chain I saw that movie the other day again it is oh, enough for it. the first down yeah, that was closer than it probably should have been first down for the Elks getting the ball to the 47 yard line of Stephenville 857 to go here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter 49 to nothing 
Stevenville well on top of Burleson. I have it on good authority that this clock's going to get milked here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Does that mean it runs fast? Yes, sir. Gene is under center. High formation once again. Kirkland inside the 45, running hard to about the 43-yard line, a gain of five. That'll put him over 80 yards for the game. Nice tackle there by Richard Silva. It looked like Kirkland was going to get a lot more than Silva just should, came and filled the hole and shut that one down. Officially four yards on the carry after they get the ball spotted. Twins to the near side, offset eye this time behind Gene. Tight end look. I think after that last touchdown, we just picked up a lot of listeners. Please. Play action. Throwing the deep ball for Muse. It's over his head. Not a very good route by Muse that time. He cut that route off if he'd have ran the post. I think uh, he might have had a good chance of completing that pass. Third down and six for the Elks. We just got a lot of listeners from where? A lot of people left here. Uh, oh, I hear you saying. Their vehicles now, I guess. A lot of people have left this game. 808 remaining in the Texas fourth, fourth quarter. 42 now. Excuse me, 49 now. Then Stephen on top of Burleson. High formation behind Gene. Once again, a tight end look on the far side, handing off to Kirkland. Kirkland is hit immediately, and he's driven backwards. A great hit from the Yellow Jackets 30, Monty Derrick. Boy, that was a big time shot there. Loss of one on the play. It'll set up fourth down and seven. And as hard as Kirkland's been running, that's a great hit for Derrick. Derrick is a junior defensive end. Probably going to be seeing a little linebacker next year as well. He might be more defensive end, depending on where uh, Scott Lee goes. But definitely, you're seeing a lot of the future out there right now for Steven. Fourth and seven for the Elks. They're now 0 and 10 on third down conversions. As in shotgun is Gene. Gene snap comes back to him, setting up, looking to throw, still looking. Now he'll try to escape, and he will be sacked. No, he'll get away. Get inside the 45 to the 42-yard line. A gain of about two on the play. And the ball will turn over on downs to Stephenville at the 42, and the defense has done their job. Here with 7.06 remaining in the ball game. If the offense can move the ball here now, Boots, a few times, I think they can run this clock out right here. Some of the coaching staff are uh, running down Steve Ross right now. I think the coaching staff trying to get some idea on some scores, especially from 5-4-A. That's been especially their desire of information, if you will. Into the game now at quarterback for the Jackets is Trey Feltz. He will pitch the ball back to Wooten. Wooten cutting inside the 45 across midfield, running hard down to the 46-yard line. We talked about this kid before the game. Always looks like he's running downhill, and it certainly looked like there after the 11-yard pickup and the first down. Ball is spotted at the 47. First and 10 for the Jackets. Now several new faces in there for the Jackets on the offensive line as well. We'll try to get to some of those in a moment. Belt center center, eye formation behind him. Giving the ball to the first man through. That's Haney. Haney keeps running inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. A pickup of eight yards. Jackets keeping the clock rolling as they keep the ball on the ground. 6-17 and counting here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. 49 to nothing, Stephenville. I have some scores out of District 5-4-A uh, for you. These are only halftime scores, but... Uh, Give them to you after this play, please. Belts under center once again, pitching back to Wooten. Inside the 40, inside the 35, keeps his feet. First down to the 34-yard line, maybe the 33, depending on the spot. At the half, uh, all three of these games were at the half. Andrews 21, Sweetwater 14. It's uh, Lakeview 14, Big Spring 8. And Snyder 31, Fort Stockton nothing. Those are all at the half. First and 10 for the Jackets at the 34-yard line. We will try to get those updated for you here in just a few minutes. Once again, Feltz under center, the two backs behind him. Inside trap, handoff to Walker. Barely gets a handoff, but does. Gets down to the 27-yard line. Credit Feltz, who got hit right when he spun out of center. Still got the ball to Walker. Pickup of about eight on the play. Actually, seven. Sorry, Jay. Second down and three for Stephenville. Not a problem. 
inside of five minutes. He probably already had it written correctly. I think you're right. <laughs> he doesn't listen to us. Not at all. He watched where the officials spot the ball. Feltz under center. He drops the ball momentarily. The ball is loose, and I believe Burleson has gotten on it, and they have. Feltz did not get the ball cleanly from the snap at center. The ball rolled to the 26-yard line. First turnover in the game for the Jackets. It is the first turnover. We've had a couple fumbles, but that is the first turnover of the game. Coming away with it was Nathan Uranga. Urang. First and ten for the Ilks. <laughs> That's for you, Rang. And that'll send them going home. <laughs> first and ten for the Ilks. 446 where that fumble took place in the Techstar Ford, fourth quarter, 49 to nothing. Gene throwing out in the flats, has his receiver, and he will be dropped Man, behind the line of scrimmage. Time for that ball to get there, didn't it? Kyle Figum, Figum. He had to be thinking, get here. <laughs> ball took a long time to get down the line of scrimmage. Mm. And right there was Scott to tackle him right at the line of scrimmage. Figum, that's how we've been given the correct pronunciation. Second down and 10. That was only the second completion for one yard. He has two completions, two yards in the game, I believe. Is that correct? No. Oh, dropped for about a three-yard loss. Coming up to make a huge hit for the Jackets was Nathan Wilson, and he just dropped. You know the... Uh, Dustin Kirkland on the play, so it'll be about a two-yard loss, third and 12. This could be a game that's under 100 yards of total offense for the defense. Now, he had one pass completion for one yard in the first half. And that was pretty much no gain there. So, I, I get what so, you're saying, so, so two giving, passes for yep. one yard. Snap back in shotgun, looking to throw once again is Gene. Gene setting up the screen out at the 21-yard line, up past the 25, across the 30, 35, across the 40, down to the 46-yard line, up to the 46, I should say, on the screen. Worked nicely thrown out to, was that Kirkland again? It was. He gets the first down out at the 46-yard line. Judging it was interesting about that. The Jackets had a chance to tackle him one yard behind the line of scrimmage and if they had done that he'd have been complete three yeah. passes for no yardage that's a good point that kind of killed that though with that 21 yard reception 21 yards on the screen nice execution for the elks who get the first down with 316 and counting come on defense we want to give away a vcr gene handing off to kirkland kirkland getting back to the line of scrimmage and then we'll go forward for about two yards Brown can't cause the fumble. Well, it just did. <laughs> Fanning had a chance to scoop the ball up, but the whistle had already blown. Second down and eight for the Elks as we're now under three minutes. And it's just now 10 o'clock. We're going to get out of here in a decent hour tonight. Well, you know, that may be why some of those scores were just reporting from half. I'm sure they are in the third quarter, but they may not be to the fourth quarter yet. Well, that's unusual <laughs> for us the last few weeks. To beat anybody. Twins to the near side, split receivers behind Chris Jean. Jean stepping back, looking to throw in some trouble, and he'll be sacked back at the 48-yard line. Coming off of Jean, once again, Nathan Wilson making a big stop behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 13, and the Elks on third down conversions are over 10, I believe. Is that correct? They're oh, 1 of 11. That's right, because on the screen pass, they did convert. Third down here, coming up for the Elks. Once again, Chris Jean is in shotgun. Hey, Stevie. Split backs next to him, split receivers both sides. Jean looking to throw, setting up the screen again. Finds Clarkland in the middle of the field, and he'll be tackled at the 45-yard line. A gain of two on the pass. It was not Kirkland. Number 88, Clint Turner. Caught the ball. His first catch of the game, I believe. And it's fourth down, and I'm sure the Elks will have to go with for it with a minute and a half remaining. Well, this is about as ugly as I thought it would be. Uh, with the exception of one fumble there late, this probably should have been 56 to nothing, which yeah. we heard a lot of people say. And, and I saw one spread that said 55, and so, you know, 49 to nothing, doesn't matter, gets the big victory. Long pass downfield. Almost picked off, went right through the hands of Trey Feltz, had a chance to pick that off. The intended receiver was Jesse Fanning, a little bit underthrown. Ball will turn over on downs at the 47-yard line. Steven will start first and 10 
at the 107 <laughs> mark. <laughs> what are you doing? Patty bust some candy in the soft Steve drink. Ross just comes up here, plops down, and starts eating candy. Takes his headset off. Are you off the clock? <laughs> yeah. I only no. I pay you for four full quarters. <laughs> oh well. Three. Oh, that's got, right. You had got four quarters out of us in the last month. <laughs> including myself. Exactly. First and ten for the Jackets in the game. Now Patronus in the game at quarterback. Pitches the ball to Wooten. Wooten outside the 45 to the 40. Knocked out of bounds. No, he is not. He gets to the 37-yard line. A gain of nine on the play. One more play should be. Should do. 56 and counting. Maybe eight. We'll just wait on the spot. Take your time, Mr. Official. He's looking at the clock. Good man. Yeah, he probably got to go ahead and set it one more time. Oh, yeah, yeah, one more there we go. 42 seconds and counting. Ball is at the 37-yard line. What are we looking at in total yardage tonight? Uh, it's not going to be it'll be over 500, but it's not going to be as big as we initially thought. You can just take a knee here. Hand off to Walker. Walker inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. That's enough for the first down. That momentarily, I believe, stops the clock, or yeah. does it? It is a first down, and they won't even stop the clock. 16 seconds and counting, and that's going to do it. A classy move by Coach Bobby August as he runs to the near sideline to meet Art Browles and shake his hand <laughs> after the game. Not to mention his head. Say what a great game it is. Three, two, one, that will do it. Steeple's winning streak will now go to 19 games. Steeple is now 9-0 in this year's campaign. Still perfect in district, obviously. We'll have a chance to finish the regular season 10-0 as they take on Granberry here, excuse me, on the road next week. Our final score. Is that our first shutout? It is, isn't it? It is the first shutout of the year. Steamville 49, Burleson nothing.